Hi, I'm Nan Simonson. Last night, about this time, I shot a video for a Moroccan carrot and spinach soup that was marvelous. And I was in a sweater and it was cold outside. I'm in Southern California. It's supposed to be hot right now. And it's, I don't know, maybe 65. <laughs> I consider that cold. So it's, oh, and it is what? Uh, almost the first day of, it's the end of, of, um, of May. In any case, today I decided, oh, I want to get some butternut squash out of my freezer and use up some sweet potatoes and decided to do a sweet potato butternut squash apple soup with a curry flavor. And so I'm going to show you what I'm doing. As always, if you've watched my videos, because you know I'm a no, you don't know. I am a whole food plant-based culinary coach with a lifestyle medical practice and my YouTube videos. So I'm going to put in an onion and it's one chopped white onion. I stopped because while that, this is cooking, I have something else I've started or I'm going to do and serve with it. It's going to be a caramelized onion and cabbage side dish. And I, I stopped for a second because in that, because I had used up all my white, white onion, I used leek. And I looked at this and I was just kind of getting confused and thinking that doesn't look like leek to me. Well, that's the next thing I'm going to be cooking, but I don't think I'll video it. So why am I making all this noise and battering my faint at the, the stove? Well, it's not with grease, that's for sure. Because as a whole food culinary coach, I don't consider oil the whole food. Maybe olive oil is the crush of an olive, but I, I cook without oil. I follow Chef AJ and a number of them who are either SOS light or SOS free, and SOS stands for salt, oil, and sugar. I do use salt, some, not a lot. I don't use refined sugars. I use, well, whole food like date that's ground up with water. And what I've just done is I've added onions that this quickly, have browned, and they've browned because I'm putting in broth that as it cooks away, you heard that spattering, as it cooks away, it um, caramelizes, and the bit of the onion um, uh, liquid that sticks to the pan then sort of caramelizes, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm softening the onion, you want to do that to, re to reduce the bitterness and to soften it a little bit. I'm going to add some carrot, then I'm going to add ginger and garlic and some flavorings, the savory flavorings like cumin and, what do I have? Cumin and some cinnamon and some um, uh, curry, curry powder, okay. I think that looks just fine. Do you see that? And that was quick, and most recipes would have caused, called for two to three tablespoons or four tablespoons of oil. Well, why? We don't need it. I'm not fat adverse. I will add fat. I'm even thinking of, I'm gonna taste it first, but I'm even thinking of adding a touch of tahini to this to give it that kind of a silky mouthfeel, but I won't do it if it's not necessary because I am adding light coconut milk. And there is, of course, the coconut fat in there. So, especially with the carotenoids. What are carotenoids? They're a phytonutrient, say a phytochemical, meaning plant nutrient, that you're going to find in the yellow, orange, and red vegetables. And they are good for our eyes, they're good for our skin, they're good for our brain. They are a necessary part of producing vitamin A. And some call them a precursor of vitamin A. Um, okay, so I've done what I wanted to do with that. Now I'm going to add the, I wish you could smell this, the chopped ginger. It was a couple of slices of ginger and then I, I added, what, three 
uh, cloves of garlic and I have a little Tupperware zip line uh, chopper that chops everything beautifully and that's what I used. And I'm not going to brown the garlic, it will um, get bitter, but I'm just sort of softening it all. And then I'm going to add the carrot and then I'm going to add the seasonings and let them, I'm gonna say toast very quickly, 30 seconds, a minute, until I can smell the aroma of these strong spices. All right, the carrot is going in and this is big chunky um, bits of vegetables, carrot and, well, carrot and sweet potato and butternut squash and even apple. But all of this is going to be broken down into a, uh, I'll call it a slurry, because this is going to be a creamy soup. Um, I can put it in the blender to do that, or I can just use my immersion blender and break it up. And that sometimes leaves a bit of chunks, and I really like those chunks. Um, <laughs> I was going to say I'm confused again. That's the garlic that goes in the cabbage. I almost added more garlic, and I thought, wait a minute. All right. See, this is what happens when I have a number of things going at one time. All right. Now, if you were with me and you were standing here, you would see that the spices are sticking to the bottom. We don't want them to burn. We want them to lightly toast. And right now, it would hit you. Boom. They're toasting. They're flavorful. That's all we needed. Now... I want to stop that. So I'm going to add moisture and more things to um, break it all up. So that was the butternut squash. That was about, what is that? About two cups of butternut squash. This is one chopped apple. And I used peeled and cored. And I used envy. I like envy. It could have been honey crisp. It could have been, well, gala. Um, and then this is three medium sweet potatoes. It came out to about two, two pounds, uh, four ounces. You don't have to be exacting with things like this. And I'm going to mix it all up so that it's well blended. The heat is still on. And... I'm going to add broth. I'm going to start with four cups. I want it to cover it. And I want, when I break this down with the immersion blender, for it to be um, loose enough that I don't feel that I'm eating a, a, well, I was going to say a paste. Sometimes cream soups are way too thick. Um, we don't want that. So I am going to put four cups. The smell is, the fragrance is delicious. I will be adding a little bit of salt later and black pepper later. But I'm going to cook this and get all the flavor I can without having to salt and pepper. And then we'll see where it goes. I'm going to add a little bit more broth. Yesterday, I also made a big eight, well, actually it was this, this pot, eight quart stock pot of scraps from my freezer that I save until the gallon container, Ziploc container is full and put it in here, cover it with water, cook it, strain it out. And I ended up with three, four cups, uh, four cup um, containers of broth plus for the soup that I was making, another three cups. So I like to do that. Why spend the money on organic broth? Most of my vegetables are organic when I can make it myself. So this is it, people. I'm going to go ahead and bring this to a simmer. Then I'm going to reduce it. I'm going to cook it 20 minutes and test. It will probably be 30 minutes before it's finished. If it's not very soft, I'll do it even a little bit longer. And then I'll bring you back in time to show you adding or what I do 
to finish it off, to turn it into a creamy soup, to adjust the seasonings, and it will be almost time to serve it for dinner. I think I'll have my cabbage started. By then I have this big bowl of cabbage and then leeks and then garlic that's going to be cooked down to just about nothing. And I thought, what pan do I do that in? I'll use my big wok. So I may even have that sort of in the way when I bring you back. Okay, that's that. Oh, I'm looking for, oh, there it is. And I'll see you. Hi, I'm back and this is looking wonderful. I will taste it, see what I think of the flavors. Actually stir it a bit. Um, yep, this is about as soft as it needs to be. And I am going to use the immersion blender. Although, oh man, that's really good. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, I am going to add a little bit of salt. I pre-ground this sea salt crystals. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper that was pre-ground. And I want to warn you about something. Well, I'm going to uh, blend this first. But when you get coconut milk, I use the light. It's quite a few fewer calories of fat and I don't want that much fat but I definitely want the flavor and some if it's cold as opposed to a really warm day and your cupboards are warm you're going to get this cap of, of of fat the way you would on milk that wasn't homogenized don't just push through this thinking oh well I'll just break the cap you'll get it squirting all over I've done that so I'm going to sort of break through like that and then soften it because it wants to come out and it's not a pretty sight when it goes shooting all over your cabinets and counters. There we go. Okay. Isn't this a nifty spatula? It's, it's from Tavolo. I have a number of their things that are um, silicone. And so they'll take a high heat. Uh, they don't transfer plastics. This is one too, it's a silk. Oh, Nan, I wasn't supposed to do that. That's funny, oh, whatever. Okay, yes, I wanted to blend it first. I would have had a thicker broth to blend, oh, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I start this and then I'll, if it's not too noisy or if it goes fast, maybe I won't stop the video, but if it's too noisy and um, is taking too long, I'll stop it and bring you back. Let's see. <laughs> I'm liking that some of these carrots are staying uh, whole. I like something like that in my mouth when I'm eating a soup. You can't do this with a pot that's too full or it splatters outside of the pot, which it wants to do right now. But we're looking okay. All right, I'm gonna to add to this some coconut water. I had a little container of coconut water that I drunk most of. This is about, oh, two thirds of a cup of coconut water. I'm going to add some lemon juice, blend it some more. There are still chunks in here. If I put this in my Vitamix, it would be silky. And you may want silky. I don't. Okay. There we go. I like an immersion blender. It's very handy. Are you gonna stay? Good. All right. Let me taste. Oh, you know what? That is just wonderful. Mm. 
Uh uh uh. Let me let me show it to you. I'm probably gonna serve this with some toasted um toasted almonds on top. I could put a little bit of toasted coconut. Oh wait, actually I wanna do something before I do that. I'm gonna put, gotta be careful here, too much of a dump and we've got problems. Mm, that'll be fine. Okay. That's just fried chili peppers. I like a little bit of spice, a little bit of heat, and I like the way it looks in the soup. I may add more, we may add just a dash to our portion. Okay, let's do this again. I just want to bring it to you and show you. Okay. Taste it again. Oh, that is so nice. It's cool, it's cloudy, and this is going to be a wonderful soup. We'll have this soup. I will put some toasted nuts on top. I'll show it to you plated. And I'm going to take this off and go ahead and put on my wok. Can you see why I'm using this? This is a steel, carbon steel wok. And can you see why I'm using this for that big pan of cabbage? I will caramelize the onion and then I will um, uh, cook the um, cabbage for a bit and brown that slightly. And um, this will be a good meal. I hope you're having a great day. I know I am. I am the author of Aging Powerfully, which I wrote when my I turned 70. That was my birthday present to myself to take on the mission to spread the word that at 70, I still had decades to go and so do you. So many people think that when they hit their 50s, 60s, and especially their 70s, it's over. And now it's a downhill slog. It absolutely is not. With the pillars of lifestyle medicine, and I work at a lifestyle medical clinic, and they're pillars of health, and I'm outlining 10 pillars of health. The things that can keep you going strong and vibrantly into decades of health. Yes, it's food. Yes, it's movement. Yes, it's community. Yes, it's staying away from addictive substances. And um, yes, it's sleep and plenty of it, seven to eight hours a night. You need to prioritize that. But there are other things as well. Consider the book. It's a good read. And there's a story about my younger years that helps explain why I'm so madly passionate for the um, over the subject of taking control of your own life. It can make you or it can break you. All right. Have a great day. I will. I'm going to have a great meal. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, I'm back. I wanted to show you the finished soup. I'm moving it around so it's not going to look plated as beautifully because the edges are kind of blurred, but isn't that, here, isn't that beautiful? And what I used, and you can find this on my website and I'll attach it to the recipe, is my vegan mayonnaise. No, this one's the vegan sour cream. And it's a, a, a sweet-ish soup. The sour cream gives it a clean uh, flavor because it's, it's um, well, it's very flavorful. And I just drizzled it and then used a knife to swirl it around. I have toasted slivered almonds and um, leaves of chopped cilantro. And it's, it's terrific. <laughs> okay. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Mm,